Freddy Fish is a licensed gynecologist. Hi. I'm Chekhov27. Has this ever happened to you? You're swimming around in the ocean, minding your own business. Perhaps you'll get some ice cream later. When, all of a sudden, a school of sardines flies straight up your vagina. But worry not, for Freddy Fish is on the case with her trusty nurse, Luther. Luther, you cocksucker! Freddy Fish in the Case of the Missing Kelp Seeds is a game about a fishy gynecologist named Freddy and her little green fuckbag, Luther, searching for a treasure chest filled with kelp seeds that was stolen from Freddy's grandmother. And while this appears to be a nice little game about helping out your grandma, it's actually a stark warning of the inevitable downfall of an unfettered capitalist society. Because the kelp isn't just one source of food, it's the only source of food. So, if you don't find it, all of the fish are going to die. Because Grandma Grouper has a monopoly on kelp seeds, which is apparently the only food available in the ocean besides peanut butter and jellyfish sandwiches, which Grandma Grouper also has a monopoly on. You crafty cunt. Not even the king is able to get food from anyone else besides Grandma Grouper, who is, for all intents and purposes, a capitalist pig, who, rather than owning up to the fact that she spent her entire security budget on Waluigi hentai, instead of maintaining the safety of the primary food source for all ocean life, takes to her corporate Twitter account and plays the victim. She then gets her granddaughter to find the seeds for her, so that if she fails, Grandma Gruber can use her own granddaughter as a scapegoat. So while the goal of this game is to find the kelp seeds, the true intent behind it is avoiding the gas chamber. Did I mention that this game was developed by Humongous Entertainment? A company owned and operated by Joseph Stalin whose only goal in life is to spread the glorious ways of communism while eating yogurt made from the cum of Soviet factory workers. It's a power thing. You wouldn't understand. After leaving Grandma Grouper's house, we of course come across Luther, doing the most pathetic loop I have ever seen. I mean, look at this. It's fucking awful. If the KGB were here, Luther would be stoned to death with potatoes, which are so abundant, you don't even have to eat your own children anymore. Unless you happen to be a filthy degenerate Ukrainian. Yes, Luther may be a worthless piece of shit, but in capitalism, you gotta take all the help you can get. So Luther, you better not fuck this up. You then come across other characters in the game, such as Mrs. Halibut. Uh oh, I'm stuck. You know, I'm starting to think that this capitalist motherland might not have the best education system, but that's all right. For as we all know, education is a demonic tool used by the masses to do horrible things like teaching children to read and raping small dogs. Thankfully, this situation is nothing to worry about as I always come prepared. And if you ask me, this looks like a job for Johnny Sins. Johnny, come on out here. After a delightfully powerful anal pounding, we learn that Mrs. Halibut's son is stuck under a rock, both figuratively, in the sense that the rock is the burden of unfettered capitalism, and literally, in the sense that it is a big fucking rock. Did you find my guppy? Well, Mrs. Halibut, we did. But sadly, your son is a fucking moron for getting himself stuck in there. Natural selection's a bitch, and your son can get fucked. So, Johnny, come on out here! After another round of America's favorite game, Let's Fuck a Baby Halibut, we come across Ray, a black market dealer who sells buttons and black tar 
heroin. And while heroin is not really my thing, I fucking love buttons. You can't get the super duper duka booga poly gizmo unless you give me a cock. Where are we gonna get a cock? Oh, ho, 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 Luther, my boy, do not worry. I got this. Johnny, come on in here. After Johnny Sins fucks Ray the Manta Ray in his Manta Ray butthole, he has no choice but to give you the device because there is truly nothing that cannot be solved with gay sex, which is the only capitalist currency that does not lose its value. Well, that and Dogecoin. By the way, don't ever forget to pick shit up off the floor. If you find a key that you can pick up, you better pick that shit up. You found it, so it belongs to you. A sacred capitalist doctrine that was brought into existence by the creator of capitalism, Adam Smith, who famously said, finders keepers, losers weepers. Now, if you'll excuse me, there is a dog park down the block, and I am feeling incredibly horny. While this doctrine holds no sway in a perfect communist utopia, it is the crux of capitalism, which requires you to live off what you can find on the floor. So yes, someone may have lost their key, which could have been for their home, their car, or even for their dialysis machine, but hey, you found it, so it's yours now. And if they find you and demand that you give the key back, you can just walk away. Because what are they gonna do? Fight me for it? Physically? They have shitty kidneys. And my kidneys are strong. And they will be even stronger when I hook them up to my new dialysis machine. Of course, not everyone you meet in the ocean is going to provide you with a pleasant experience. Sometimes you meet a family of starving degenerate Ukrainians who, if given the opportunity, would gladly consume their firstborn son over a bowl of liquid beets. Or sometimes you meet a French crab who only communicates through the use of shitty, non-rhyming songs. Crab, what's wrong? I would gladly give you my fishing pole if you could please get me out of this cage. You're lucky that your shit-covered capitalist whorehouse allows you to be French in public. Back in the motherland, you would have been castrated and forced to mine Bitcoin in a re-education factory. All right, Luther, it's your time to shine. You see that bottle over there? I want you to do your best in procuring it. I know it's hard when you have about as much brain power as Ukrainians have morality, but I believe in you. And if you are able to get that bottle, I will gladly share some of my meat, which I cut from this stray dog that I found outside of my government assigned apartment. So go on, you can do it. The bottle! Oh, good fucking job, Luther! You dropped the fucking bottle! Sorry, Freddy. No! Shut the fuck up! I don't want to hear another word out of your fucky little mouth! You fucked up, Luther! Eventually, you do find the kelp seeds and rejoice, as Freddy is safe for another day, until some gangster sharks arrive on the scene and demand that you give them the kelp seeds. But Freddy has an idea, a beautiful communist idea. Perhaps we can all share the kelp seeds, a small communist spark that everyone agrees to. In fact, more than agree to, they fucking love it. But they also know that they are not enough to overpower Grandma Grouper and her powerful 
spies. And the sharks know that any attempt to take the kelp seeds for themselves would result in them having their tongues cut out before going for a nice ride in a re-education van. Perhaps one day, this idea will blossom into a perfect utopian society. But for now, we must return the kelp seeds to Grandma Grouper. Now can you both help me plant the seeds? Grandma Grouper, you wrinkly cunt! How dare you! I just swam across the entire fucking ocean! Because you couldn't keep your fucking doors locked! You're a goddamn piece of shit, Grandma Grouper! And if you ever pull this shit again, I'm putting you in a fucking retirement home! And not a nice one! I'm sending you to the Bill Cosby home for geriatric fucks! So how about you get off your wrinkled ass and plant your own FUCKING SEEDS! Now, I know what you're thinking. Grandma Grouper is a powerful woman. And surely, saying something like this to her is a really good way of being labeled a dog-raping, communist sympathizer, and having your reproductive organs removed so that you are unable to reproduce with anyone else at the re-education concentration camp. And this is exactly what happened to Freddy, who, thanks to her knowledge of gynecology, narrowly escaped the camp by hiding inside of a slug's vagina and waiting many, many moons as the slug slowly crawled its way to Germany, where Freddy decided to live in exile while studying Marxism in hopes of coming back to her dirty fish town and converting it into a shining communist fish utopia. A place where everyone can grow and eat kelp seeds, regardless of their gender, race, or ethnicity, unless they happen to be Ukrainian, in which case they can eat their fucking children. 